Thank you very much for inviting me to this conference. What a great idea to convene such a distinguished audience and group of experts and speakers to talk about the Colombia of the future. So I want to congratulate the students of Harvard, MIT, for organizing the conference and for choosing a topic that goes beyond the short-term debate that is taking now place here in Colombia. And let's have a broader perspective, a medium to long-term view. But before I do that and spend a few minutes of your time, let me take a step back and discuss what has happened in Colombia in these past few years, throughout this decade. Let me begin by saying that we had to deal with a very significant shock, a shock that occurs only every two or three generations, a shock that was the result of the collapse in oil prices. We lost 70% of our oil exports. We lost one-fifth of the revenues of the government of Colombia. And we lost almost one-half of the foreign direct investment we used to receive in the oil and mining sector. So not small shocks. But the point I want to underscore is that despite the magnitude of these shocks, Colombia was able to move forward, to continue progressing in the social front, as shown, for example, by the remarkable reduction in poverty. Back in 2010, the poverty rate was 30% of the population, now is 17%, 5 million Colombians out of poverty. The unemployment rate was 12% in 2010, last year was 9.4%. And the Gini coefficient, a measure of inequality, was 0.56 in 2010, last year it was 0.51. It's a significant reduction in the Gini coefficient. It's a significant reduction in inequality in a relatively short period of time. So the point here is continued and uninterrupted social progress despite the headwinds we were facing from the rest of the world, especially because of the decline in commodity prices. This is very reassuring. And it's not just this. It's also the labor market. The labor market is working a lot better now. First, it's a labor market that is more formal. For the first time last year, we had more formal jobs in Colombia than informal. Formal meaning jobs with social security, with contracts, with benefits paid by employers. The formality is a key component of development. A formal job pays better than an informal job. In addition, a more qualified and skilled labor force. The percentage of high school graduates that were able to move on to university education increased from 37% in 2010 to 52% last year. That's a very significant increase in the number of students in our universities and the technical and technological schools. And this is being reflected in the workforce. The workforce is more skilled therefore more productive, therefore earning better incomes. So a country that has been able to make such a significant social progress despite these negative external conditions is a country where you can only be optimistic. And this is the main point. The future is brighter. We'll have better conditions in the global economy. Now we have peace as well. We'll have better infrastructure. So this should give us the basis for thinking about the future of Colombia in very positive terms. Let me discuss in detail what I have in mind. Let me talk a little bit about the future, and let me talk about economic growth. As any economics student knows, more growth comes from more use of factors of production, like labor and capital, but also, and most importantly, about increasing productivity. In terms of labor, Colombia still has the possibility of growing faster as more women and more Colombians in the rural sector join the labor force. In fact, in the rural sector, we have one of the lowest participation rates, which means that as we have peace now and as there are more employment opportunities in the rural sector, more Colombians will decide to join the workforce and be productive, 
generating output and generating growth. The other element is investment. Colombia has the highest investment rate among its peers in Latin America. It's 27% of GDP. This is very remarkable. 15 years ago, our investment rate was almost half of that. This is really what provides the seed for future economic growth. And we have been able to preserve a relatively high investment rate in these past few years, despite the negative external shock. One key element of investment in Colombia is foreign direct investment, which now is on the order of $15 billion per year. This is not a small figure. It's about 5% of GDP. So part of the investment momentum of Colombia comes from foreign companies that consider that Colombia is an attractive country, stable, that provides huge economic opportunities. We have to continue making that case. And very importantly, more and more FDI is going to non-extractive sectors like retail, tourism, banking, uh, IT, transportation, which is very good because this increases our productivity. One key aspect has been highlighted for years as the bottleneck, as the main constraint to growth in Colombia is security. A number of studies that were conducted a decade ago on growth diagnosis indicated that the number one obstacle to growth in Colombia was security. Now we have the lowest crime rates that we've had in decades. Our homicide rate is now 24 homicides per 100,000 population. It's the same rate we had in the early 70s. So a whole generation of Colombians have never lived in a country as safe and secure as it is now. This is, of course, the result of many factors. Improved security in the cities, more use of devices that help us georeferencing crime, as recently reported by The Economist in the survey about crime in Latin America, where Colombia is highlighted as a successful story in terms of reducing crime. But the main transformation in security in Colombia is the end of the peace process. The fact that there is now a peace agreement, that the FARC, formerly a guerrilla group, an armed group, are now a political party that have given up their arms. And there, therefore, this is a significant change in the security conditions in Colombia. We, but we have to make sure that it's not just about this, that it's also about providing more development to the regions of Colombia that are depicted in the map that you're seeing on your left in green, regions where the vicious circle of the conflict and poverty was predominant. In those regions, we had high crime rates, low state presence, low capacity of the local governments to generate revenues, low provision of public goods, low investment by the private sector, and the uh, pervasiveness of illegal economies. So we have to focus on those municipalities. Direct government investment in, in, uh, in uh, the provision of public goods in those regions, but also provide incentives for the private sector to invest there. That's why we now have the possibility of creating companies in those regions with a reduced tax rate. And more than that, companies everywhere in Colombia can invest part of the revenues they have to pay to the DIAN, to the tax administration. They can use up to 50% of the taxes they have to pay to the government by investing in public goods in those municipalities. This is what we call taxes in kind, which is a model that we're following from the successful experience of Peru. In addition to peace, infrastructure is crucial. So we have the largest infrastructure program for an emerging economy today, the public-private partnerships, what we call the 4G program, $15 billion in investment throughout the country, building highways. The private sector is investing. We're providing part of the financing. We are mobilizing resources. So far, of the 31 projects of the PPP program, 12 have done the financial closure, meaning they're ready to go. They're already mobilizing machinery, breaking ground, constructing the highways, and there are more and more coming in the future. So we have an economy with more jobs, with more Colombians willing to join the labor force, with more educated Colombians in a safer country, 
with better infrastructure, and now with a more competitive exchange rate that will help our non-traditional exports grow. So as the world economy recovers, we will be able to export more. One big upside for us is a change in economic conditions in Venezuela. The moment that occurs, we're going to have the possibility of increasing our exports in a very significant way. So we're optimistic about this because we see the ingredients for growth in place. We have two elements that will reinforce our credibility and will send a very powerful signal to investors, to countries that we trade with. This is the accession to the OECD, which is in the final, final stages, which is a seal of quality. It's a test that Colombia has the level, the standards that allow the country to be part of this organization. We don't think of the OECD as the club of the rich countries. We see the OECD as the club of the best practices. We want to be in the group of countries that knows how to improve education, health, the environment, adopts the best tax standards. We want to be part of the club that knows how to do things because that will only help us accelerate our growth into the future. So that's why we're optimistic. The past makes us optimistic. The trends that we're seeing and the transition in a country with peace and infrastructure make us optimistic. But also the support of the international community saying Colombia has the standards, has the level to be able to be part of the OECD is another element that I think will allow Colombia in the next few years to accelerate its development and to reach what has been our goal, our objective for decades, for centuries, to be a developed country. A developed country means not just a country with higher income, but a country with less inequality. We're moving in the right direction. I hope we continue moving in this direction and Colombia will continue to achieve successes and will continue to show progress. Thank you very much.